Okay, let's start with the trades from Tuesday. Um, <clears throat> I got stopped out of Fitbit and I lost money shorting HMNY. Um, so this was a really annoying one, uh, HMNY. I shorted it out of the gate. I got some decent entries and I was up 10,000 on it real fast. I only covered a tiny bit and then I <coughs> stopped out for a $3,000 loss or probably close, yeah, closer to 4,000 with DCN and EVs and commissions. So that was an annoying one. Um, I see uh, I took it short overnight. VYGR, I was, I thought about taking it short overnight. I shorted it here at 22 bucks and yesterday this thing fell to low 20. So I should have held it overnight, I guess. And KL is a new swing. Oh, <coughs> didn't have much follow through yet, but you know, it could go. Nice looking gold name. Um, Let's see here. And HMNY, I, I sold most of my shares at the same time as I shorted it. Um, let's see here. GTHX got stopped out of this swing. Uh, <clears throat> ECYT, I shorted it. I took it o overnight. Um, yeah, so I shorted it in this area. Well, actually, I shorted the pre-market, got stopped out. I shorted it near the open, or I uh, got stopped out. So I took a little bit uh, of losses on it before I finally nailed it. Uh, so I started shorting it here when it showed some red candles. Uh, added here, size down, added, added. And then at the <coughs> at the close or near the close, I sized down again because it, it closed really weak. But I held 12,000 shares overnight, had a nice gap down, covered some. Then I started adding, sizing down, adding, sizing down, adding, sizing down. So, oh, oh yeah, that was yesterday. Um, and then I just finally covered all of it at the close. It was just so strong. And now it's gapping up a little bit. So overall, I think I lost a little bit over 10,000 on it, maybe even close to 15 with ECN fees and commissions. So, ah, you know, I thought this thing would be sub 450 by now, but hopefully it goes to 8, 9. So I can short it again. Um, ETRM. <clears throat> oh, yeah. So this one, I bought it pre-market and near the open and then it just tanked on me took out the opening range lows and that was that and uh, instead I was actually uh, I had two choices either do ETRM or CLSN and obviously I, I took the wrong one because CLSN only went up like 300% intraday so that's uh, a little bit annoying GBTC, I was up a couple of thousand on it. I shorted it here, low 680s. I thought it was finally breaking down. I thought it was going to go down to low 600s. But instead it stopped me out. I was up a few thousand on it. And ended up taking a little bit of a loss. Roku, let's see. Oh yeah, I tried to play the bounce on this one. I don't even remember where I bought it. I think I bought it here. Yeah, when it reclaimed VWAP. And then I got stopped out. Took a loss on it. Um, BMA. Oh, I tried to short it. Didn't 
too much. KL, I bought it in this account initial, then I moved it up here. Uh, SQM is a new swing. I bought it right here. I mean, it came out of this range, and uh, so far it's had nice follow through. <coughs> CLSM. Oh, yeah, I tried to short it real quick near end of the day. Uh, but yeah, got, got stopped out immediately. And DMPI just, I don't know. Someone pumped it and I bought it. And uh, yeah, no follow through. So those were two stays trades and positions. So yeah, I had another um, uh, uh, five figure day. I've only had five figure days the past three and a half weeks. And uh, this was no exception. So I lost 80, let's say like 9,000 with ECM fees and commissions. And in this account, uh, well, these positions were pretty much unchanged. And I took a three and half thousand dollar uh, loss on HMNY. So yeah, over $10,000 losing day. And yeah, it's kind of amazing. Just five figure days every single day. Uh, and this is the Wednesday. These are the Wednesday trades. Again, took a $3,000 loss, uh, loss on HMNY. And ironically, it cracked late day. So I shorted it near the open, got stopped out, started reshorting it here, got stopped out, and then I just left it alone. And then it cracked near the close. CLSN, I sh now this is an annoying one. Um, Let's look at that. Oh, I can't see the pre-market data here. Anyways, I, I, I sh uh, mm, tried to short it here at 630, 3,000 shares. It looked like it was going to uh, fall over uh, pre-market. But for some reason, I, I, I didn't get filled. Like there, there was some, I, I located the shares in one of my accounts. And when I tried to short it, you know, I thought I was, uh, I, I got filled. But then I looked later, I, I didn't get filled because uh, they had restricted the shares uh, after I located them. So uh, I didn't have a locate on uh, in that account. So yeah, I missed out on a <laughs> pretty decent trade here, which was annoying. But uh, then I located the shares in, a, in my second account and I shorted it here. Just tiny size, ch tiny 3,000 shares. I was really tired, and I had so many trades going on, so I just didn't want to take on any risk. And yeah, it, it ended up being a decent trade. I just wish I had done more shares. And Capper, <clears throat> sell the news. This thing has been running up into the news they released today. Shorted it on the opening range lows. Also tiny size. I, I was uh, waiting for a little bit of a push to get in more. I only got 3,000 shares and I wanted 10,000, but never got that push to short more. But it ended up being a decent trade anyways. I see uh, I closed the swing from uh, Tuesday. Yeah, it's still holding up and they, uh, I saw someone starting to pump it again on Twitter. They have a new catalyst coming up in, in a few days. So who knows, you know, it's very easy to reshort it again once it loses this five, 60 area and then you can r risk like 20 cents or so because r right now it could very easily push back to 657 dollar area i just wanted to be safe okay uh hmny size down a little bit more i only have 500 token shares left um f from my 270 three dollar buys um, ideal scenario if this thing doesn't break down um, and you know go sideways for another couple of days and then breaks to the upside that would be a ideal scenario but we'll see XXII so I added more opening range highs here at 289 and yeah, they have a conference today and tomorrow, uh, and we'll see if they, what happens if they say something good. 
but yeah, I've been, you know, I, I still think this thing can go to four plus this year. So we'll see. Um, and yeah, I, I've trimmed most of my my swings like EISIO and Pierce and all of these. I, I'm trim. I'm, I've been trimming them every day. CGNX, OSK, KL. I size down a little bit. Uh, SQM I sized down, HN I sold some, XXI I added, SGH I sold some, F cell had an upgrade and ra uh, range break, I added near the open, actually added here, 208, only 10,000 shares, I did not think it was going to get this kind of volume and do this kind of a run intraday, and then I was looking at it here actually, I was thinking about adding another, I don't know, 10, 15,000 shares, but then I started looking at some other stuff and I missed it and I sold some on the way up here intraday on this big 18% spike. Um, so that was a nice one. And my I still have 15,000 shares from way below here from uh, low mid 160s. Um, CRMD, what's this? You know, the problem with having so many positions, you forget some of them. Um, CB, I sold some. Dries, I sold some. Dries looks really good. Higher lows all the way. I think next next move is going to be the mid threes. Uh, WPCS, <coughs> now it's holding up. Volume has dried up completely, but it's holding up. If it starts getting some volume over this mid-high you know, this high 170s, low 180s, uh, I can easily uh, buy more. Uh, yeah, easy white I talked about, just an annoying trade. LL, very close getting stopped out on Tuesday. Um, I, I was going to sell it if it closed below the 50-day, but it didn't, and now... Uh, it's holding the 50 day perfectly. Just look at how perfectly it's holding it. Uh, but the break below this this day's lows is going to get me out. Um, so worst case scenario, I'll take a 16% gain or so from, uh, or 14, 15% gain uh, from my buys a couple of months ago. Uh, CLS and these are the low gates that later got restricted. Roku... <sighs> Man, this thing is just selling and selling and selling. I tried to bounce it again today. I bought some here at 2170s. And uh, yeah, I was up like 4,000 at one point, or 5,000. 4, 5,000. And then I got stopped out of, and yeah, just went much lower. What an annoying trade. Um, Cat B. So I shorted it, another sell the news, just like Capper, um, shorted it, uh, opening range lows, and then I covered my last shares in after hours, 270s, 280s, uh, so, so yeah, I didn't hold these overnight, and BMA, tried to short it again, but it's, it's just a thin stock, and very hard to trade and yeah, took a loss on it again. But I think if it loses this 120 to 60 area, it could go down two, three bucks in a day, four bucks. Um, ALDX, another one. What What is this? I don't remember. Oh yeah, okay. So I bought it for a swing, but I didn't like the closing on it. Close kind of weak. And it wasn't a great setup. I saw this range, you know, recent big runner, a little bit of a rounded bottom. If you remember, I had a big trade on it when I bought it here. This day here, it went straight up like 70%. Uh, and I thought, you know, maybe could run a buck or two again, but ah, just not a great setup. I didn't close strong, so I closed it. IMPX, I actually sold it before it closed. Uh, RGSC, I had a quick short on it, late day when it broke 
blow this range here. And then I covered it after hours because they were going to have a conference or a call in after hours. And I didn't want to hold into it in case they say something, you know, pumpish and it goes to 350 or something. Uh, but it's going to be a main short watch today. Um, okay, so those were the trades and positions for the cap past couple of days. HMNY, uh, I may short it like green to red or opening range lows. I'm not going to do big size, you know, three, four thousand shares maybe. See, in case it breaks down big, I want to be there, but I'm still hoping it holds up and has a, another breakout. ARD, I'm just stalking it. Very thin, uh, but it's holding up. And they have, I think they have a catalyst. Let's see. Uh, I don't know. The catalyst has already passed, but it's holding up. I don't know. If it sets up, could go higher. Not looking to short this one. It's way too thin. Uh, Roku, yeah. Again, looking to buy it. If it, but it needs to hold. It needs to hold and take out. Uh, a resistance to the upside. I see, uh, could be both a long and a short, like I said before. I do, this, this, not, this is not a short, it's definitely going to be a long. Um, not sure about it yet. Uh, ECYT. Hmm. <coughs> I don't know if I'm going to long it. If I see a really good setup, I may take it long, but it's going to be a short watch. Um, not, not, not sure it's going to be today, but I, I, I hope it goes higher. Ideal scenario goes up two, three days in a row, goes like nine, ten bucks or something. That would be awesome. Uh, IMPX, kind of regret I sold it, but... <laughs> In case it goes to like a dollar or something, I don't know. So I may buy it back on dips. Okay, so dries. Um, I was looking to add to it, but I probably won't. So I'll remove it. SDRL, you know, it's 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 a bankrupt stock. Equity is probably worthless. Or, uh, but heck. If it gets going, this is kind of stocking a risk two, three cents to make twenty, thirty, or more. You know, this thing could really go. Like last year, we had this bankrupt oil stocks, Line Q, and uh, LNCO Q, and also BTUU Q, uh, which was a cold, uh, uh, sorry, coal stock, and those things went up hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of percent. So who knows, you know, this thing. I don't think they're bankrupt yet, but they're almost guaranteed bankrupt. I think they're caught in that right now. But, but you know, these things can go if they want to. Uh, recent IPO, I don't know. Not really. Could go. ALDX still watching. This one is super thin. They have data this month. I, I, I'll remove it. I have so many watches. Blue, I think they have a catalyst coming up this quarter. I have to double check uh, in case. I, I, you know, I'm interested in buying this range break here. But in case they have a catalyst or data later this quarter, I'm, I won't buy it. I don't, wanna, I don't want that overnight risk. This one uh, looks really good. UVXY constantly stalking it in case we get some sustained selling. Uh, this one I talked about. Another recent IPO looks decent. Looks good. You know, get some volume, I'll buy it. These biotech IPO, recent IPOs have been super hot. Uh, this thing has a catalyst this quarter, NDA filing. Uh, yeah, breaks this 540, I, I may buy it. This one is getting really tight. This is former MSTX. Um, you know, it had a 80% run. 
Now it's flagging for a couple of weeks, getting super tight. I, I, I'm telling you guys, this thing breaks this mid high nine some volume could go to 15 20 it's be, you know i mean maybe not 20 but mid teens very possible uh, i actually bought it a couple of days ago or was it last week i think i bought it here and uh, or here maybe but then i got stopped out um this is just a random thing i'm watching I think the equity wor is worthless, so I don't know. I lost 5,000 on it on this day here. Bought it too aggressively. Um, mm, I don't know. Kind of setting up on the 60-minute chart. Higher lows as a bit of a range. Ideally, go sideways another couple of days. Yeah. I'm not super excited about most of these. Just stalking them. I, I usually like to put uh, things on my long watch list way too early. Just in case. But um, BLDP, one of my main watches, it's the same sector as Plug and F Cell. And uh, the, I don't know why these fuel cell stocks are starting to run again, but this thing has a tight range. Reminds me about SQM, also a tight range, and then it broke out and went straight up. <clears throat> but BLDP is a smaller stock, lower float. <laughs> you know, it <coughs> it breaks this 480. <coughs> Excuse me, breaks this uh, high 480s of volume. It could go to six bucks, and you can risk like 10 cents on it or 15 cents or so. Um, a lot of biotechs, another biotech IPO. A lot of them. It's just been the hottest sector, so that's why there's so many of them on the watch list. This thing has um, analyst day October 17. So if, the, if it sets up again, you know, in three to five days, could have another leg up into the analyst day. Okay, Oof, a lot of things here. CLSN, any good pops I may... Oh, it's going higher in after hours, nice. Any good pops I may short it, same thing here. It, it's the same thing on all of these. Soxel, I'm not watching it right now. It's not extended. Um... You know what I'm looking for in, in these shorts by now. Uh, main ones would be RGSC, STRM, if it can go to like four bucks or something like that. Uh, v, ah, not this one. Mankind, hopefully. I really hope this thing goes to high threes, low fours or something. Uh, yeah, those would be the main ones, I guess. There's so many, I really have to... Yeah. Pick out the best ones before they open. Okay, so that's it. 